السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسول النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected listeners from before the Eid you've been listening about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be attracted towards akhirah and the life of the hereafter more than what we see right before us which is dunya this worldly life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created human beings in a way that they are a combination of two things every single human being one is what is visible and the other part is invisible the part that is visible is our human body our hands our eyes our our ears our face our limbs but every human being has an invisible part which is contained within this visible part and that is the ruh that is the spirit and that spirit is something that will enter jannah so this journey of this ruh the ruh as we learn from the quran and hadith was created by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much before the body was was made and it was in a place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the time came when it was to be sent into this world. For the part of the journey of this ruh or the spirit through this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted it a container or a rider upon which this journey is going to be made and that container or that ride is going is, is called the body when the time for departure from this world comes the ruh is extracted from the body the ruh is extracted from the body and it goes into if it's a good ruh it goes into a place called illiyin which is a place of high honor where the arwah are kept with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from several Quran and narrations from and narrations in the hadith we learn that the life of the hereafter again is going to pertain directly and specifically to this ruh the invisible part and that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to work on and keep it in good shape while it is making this journey through this world so while we are living in this world while we are living this life while it is permissible to work for the improvement and comfort of this container this ride that our ruh is traveling upon it is requisite, it is a farz to work on the internal self or the ruh. 
if we work on this internal self allah has promised jannah in the hereafter allah has promised jannah and if we do not work hard on this ruh this ruh does not become capable to enter jannah and the deception of this world the ghurur of this world is that this world itself is physical itself is visible and all its attraction all its inv- invitation or call is towards working on what is visible towards working on this visible container so if you think about it the moment you wake up from the moment till you go to bed except from ibadat apart from ibadat what are we being called towards the first thing that we have after waking up for the most of us is to have some food that food goes where to our physical body to to keep it going then if we clean our bodies that is cleaning our body right i'm not talking about ibadat if we perform wudu and make salah that is the first nourishment of our soul at the beginning of the day and this soul also needs nutrients just like our physical body needs nutrients the soul also needs nutrients and those nutrients are ibadat as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that the remembrance of allah and all sorts of ibadat are a nourishment to the soul no as the day passes on we go to our workplace and we work and we work hard to earn some money at the end of the month or at the end of 15 days to get our paycheck and that is to put food on our table and to put provide for the needs of our families again all of this pertains to the physical self what we are what we are seeing at the end of the day when we return home and we go back to our bed we go to the bed thinking that we are going to sleep to get comfort for our body so that when we wake up our body should be a fresh to further effort or work to complete its needs like i said in the beginning to take care of the needs of the body to take care of the physical needs of oneself is allowed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it is permissible to do it it is allowed what is incumbent upon us what has been asked of us very thoroughly repeatedly again and again in very strong terms is to work on that which we don't even think about and that is the invisible soul that is contained within this container this container is only with us so long as we are in this world when the ruh is extracted it is the ruh and the amal the deeds that it committed using this container that will go to the grave that will go ahead in the in the in the world in the universe of the hereafter and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us if in this world we corrupted and polluted our ruh so much that it does not remain qualified enough to enter into the place of pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the jannah what is jannah jannah is the place of the perfect pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hellfire or dozakh jahannam is the place of place of perfect anger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from it so as we are living in this world we have to constantly remind ourselves that what we are doing in terms of fulfilling our physical needs our profession our our sleeping our eating are doing those things that we do for the most part and that we like to do are only for this world and they are going to stay behind in this world and the things that we don't want to do na'uzu billah that are hard upon us for example the ibadat for example five times daily salah for example when the time comes we have to fast for example when the time comes we have to perform the hajj 
for example when the time comes we have to give from our beloved money in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those are the things that really matter those are the things that really matter and that are going to get our comfort in the hereafter may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change our state of affairs but our situation is our situation is that everything everything all our focus is limited to this dunya is limited to this dunya and that is the reason why every single command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seems like a burden to us because we do not know the reality of what's going on or even if we know in theory we do not truly believe in it we do not we do not truly believe in it this seems like na'uzu billah the 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 description of hellfire and the description of the rewards of the jannah of the of the paradise seem like fairy tales to us they are in our mind we've been hearing about them since the beginning but we do not see that before us it comes about a great tabi'i that when he would when he would speak to people when he would give his speech not only would he cry himself but his heart was so strong his he had such spirit behind what he was saying he had such a firm belief behind what he was saying that he would make all the people that were listening to him cry and it is about him it is said that when he will speak it will be as if he'd be seeing the jannah to his right and he'll be seeing the hellfire on his left and when he'll be explaining those things and we'll be talking about those things people would get that effect in their heart my dear respected brothers to change our life in the direction of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's not like something we don't want to do we all want to do it in theory we all want to be good slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but what is stopping us from doing it what is stopping us from doing it our interests of this world our interests of this world if you think about it every obedience that we want to do to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every ibadah that we want to do to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't do it what what stops us from doing it think about it the first thing to do anything to do to start any project is to analyze it right to to see what are what are the hindrances what is going to happen what is going to come in the way what are the obstacles right so think about the obstacles that come when we want to follow the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we want to come to the masjid when we want to stay away from interest when we want to stay away from zina to to to, to use our thoughts and our mind and our eyes and our bodies in a way that is not permissible by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all those things think about what comes in the way what comes in the way what stops us from doing it you will you will, you will reach the conclusion that it is the love of this dunya it is the love of this dunya and that includes the love and the strength of the desires that are contained within us so the love of this dunya includes the love of the pleasure that we want to drive while we are in this world and when that overpowers us and not that it overpowers us by itself but we choose to let it overpower us because when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us any command allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said very clearly in the quran la yukallifullahu nafsan illa wus'aha la yukallifullahu nafsan illa wus'aha the words of the quran we have not burdened any soul with anything that it cannot do we have not burdened any soul with with a load that it cannot carry so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do something it is given that within us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the strength to do that thing and when we don't do that thing we do it as a matter of choice we do it as a matter of choice so the pressures that overpower us we have a fight within us we have a fight within us 
a fight between a temporary pleasure or gain of this world and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the connection that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our belief that we are going to go and stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day and our belief that we are in the eyes and in the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. So when that happens, when that happens, when that challenge comes, if we do not have a firm belief, if we do not, and this is relative, the more we have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we have belief in the akhirah, the more we have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only become easy to us, it will become natural to us, it will become beloved to us. We would like to do it. So it, it, it comes about the Sahaba that for them it was easier to get crushed under a mountain than to disobey the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, than to disobey Allah subhanahu wa taala. It was easier for them to lose their lives than to do even the slightest against the order of Allah subhanahu wa taala, the order of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. My dear respected brothers. This is all because of the connection that they had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it all comes down to this, that we, deep down, we all want to become good slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all want to become obedient slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to work on our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to work on the good, good forces within us. So that when the time comes to choose between following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following our desire or following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the pressures of the outside world, we choose obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over everything else. This connection, this strength comes from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our tongues and with our heart. With our tongues would be any form of zikr. Any form of zikr, any form of remembrance. Salah is a form of remembrance which has been made mandatory upon us because it will give us the basic level of connection so as we are able to cope with the things of this world. If we do not even pray salah, we will not be in the least able to cope with the things of this world. So salah is made mandatory zikr. But then the more we increase in nafil, in non-mandatory zikr, our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to increase. And the effect in our zikr is going to come by going to the people of zikr. The people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24-7 with their hearts, with their tongues, with their minds, with their thoughts. When we sit with them, just like the Sahaba did, sit with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they gained directly from the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the strength that was found within the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was transferred to the hearts of the Sahaba. And therefore they became people who would move mountains and who would, who would, who would not go even in the slightest against, not even think, the Sahaba themselves have said, said that we wish to be burned alive, we wish to be destroyed and annihilated rather than even think about the thoughts that come in our mind, those kind of thoughts of disobedience and questioning thoughts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us in a reality of this life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand the truth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the ones who make an effort to come to terms with the truth. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Brothers who haven't prayed the Sunnah can do so now.